Remember to subscribe to Game and Hunt Digimag. Go to gameandhuntdigimag.co.za. Our interactive online magazine where you can click, scroll and watch videos. Available on all devices. A warm welcome from my home studio. A lot of us are worried about the firearm amnesty period and the renewal of licenses in this time. We talked to an attorney about that. We also chat to the CEO of Chaza and he answers some of our questions we have relating to hunting on the various levels of this lockdown period. So I have the opportunity today to talk to one of Game & Hunt's regular contributors, Martin Hood from MJ Hood & Associates. Um, thank you for your time today. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so yeah, we've had a few questions in this lockdown period. And as of lockdown didn't bring enough troubles for all of us, some of us are worried about firearm amnesty and the license renewal in this time. So our first question we have for you today is, as we understand, the amnesty period was from the 1st of December 2019 to the 31st of May 2020. So due to this lockdown period, no one had the chance to go and hand in any firearms. Will the amnesty period be extended? Will you please elaborate on this for us? So, so the background is that, first of all, the amnesty was not perfect to start with. And there were a number of conditions that the minister imposed that are a disincentive for a lot of people to use the amnesty. Now, bear that in mind because the minister has been asked to extend the amnesty. He's been asked by a number of organizations within the firearm environment. He's been asked by me um, and he has given acknowledgement saying that he is considering it. There is a bit of a practical issue that we need to bear in mind it, and that is that parliament has to approve the amnesty notice. So he would have to get Parliament, he would have to submit a new amnesty notice to Parliament before the end of May, before the 31st of May, and it would have to be approved. I think the approval is very much a rubber stamp, but he has to do that. And he's indicated that he is considering it. And also, uh, one hopes, bearing in mind that the beginning of the amnesty, there were a lot of problems with the conditions, he may fine tune some of those conditions to make it better and also to. Um, encourage people to to use the amnesty. The last six weeks have been so dominated by the coronavirus yeah. that people have, have have had far more important priorities than using the amnesty. So he's got to put it before Parliament. He's indicated that he will do so, um, and we hope that uh, he will fine tune the conditions. Both myself and Charza have also been in touch with the Portfolio Committee on Policing. We've sent correspondence to them. We've asked that they be aware of and sensitive to the issues as well. So hopefully we, we can link the Ministry of Police to the political environment to, to expedite this as well. There are some other issues that we, we must be aware of as well. And that is, this is not just about the amnesty and firearms. There are people that need to renew competency certificates. And if they fall within the 90 days, technically they're in contravention of the legislation. There are also people that do not need the amnesty, but need to renew firearm licenses. And if they fall within the 90 days, they technically are in contravention of the legislation. What the minister has said is that he will allow these to be accepted, which is, one step further than we were before he said that. But he's not at this stage saying that the police will accept and approve those applications. In other words, he's not saying that if it's late, we will not use the lateness against you. And that's something that we've actually pressed him on because if someone is late through no fault of their own, then it can't be used against them. So the situation actually has grown from just the amnesty to renewals of firearms and competencies as well. 
And I've already been approached by security companies who, um, for work purposes and as an essential service, they need to renew their workers' competencies because their employees' competencies because they need to go out on the road and perform that essential service. So there is uh, a need for the minister to just broaden the um, uh, ac acknowledgements that he's given to, give, to make it a little bit more positive. And then there are other issues, Verona, and I'll just give you some examples. Um, there are people that need to do training in order to apply for competency and amnesty at the same time. At this stage, the proposals that we've seen, the draft schedules, do not make any definite provision to open shooting ranges. And obviously, if a person wants to go and do competency training to use the amnesty, they need to have access to a shooting range. Then a, a, a firearm training institution also needs to have permission to conduct the training. So this actually is built upon a number of different levels. And we're in the process of telling the minister what those requirements are and how we think that he should actually unlock both the shooting ranges and the firearm training. We must also bear in mind that all security officers have to undergo a shooting test once a year, or they're not compliant with the law. Now, we've been locked down for six weeks. That means that there is a substantial percentage of security officers who have not kept up to date with their shooting requirements. These are all issues that the minister must acknowledge and he has to address. Yes, yes. We have a scenario. The firearm owner's 90 days before his firearm license expires started in the lockdown period. Will he be affected in any way, seeing that he might not be able to hand in his application for renewal within the 90-day period due to the lockdown restrictions? Well, first of all, the law says you've got to hand in the application before the start of the 90 days. It says you must hand it in, must, before 90 days. So that's the first problem. The minister has acknowledged that the police will accept these applications. Now, the difficulty is, as I, as I indicated, just accepting it doesn't tell us anything. Um, we would like the minister to say we won't use it against you because it was impossible for you to, to uh, hand it in. I think that, um, practically speaking, and we, we need to give adv practical advice to our viewers, practically speaking, go to your police station on the 4th of May because the lockdown will only start easing on the 4th of May and hand in your application. If you can't hand in your application, escalate it to the National Commissioner. Uh, sorry, escalate it to the Station Commissioner. If the Station Commissioner cannot help or is not prepared to help, the next step is to contact someone like me, or if you're a member of an accredited hunting association, send the details to the accredited hunting association because, uh, or, or sport shooting or, or collecting association, as the case may be. Because what's important is government always says to us, give us examples. So we would like to collect examples if possible. And when I say we, this is the various firearm organizations that cover the various disciplines and the security industry. We would like to collect examples and say, here's the problem. You have to address it. One thing I haven't touched on is quite simply, Barona, that if the minister doesn't address these issues, he unfortunately is going to find himself back in court because there are going to be many individuals and organizations that will not have any alternative but to go to court to either get the police to accept the applications, to process them, or for an extension of the amnesty. There are many people that um, are South African citizens that intended to come back to this country because they reside either permanently or temporarily overseas. They intended to come back, but they can't because of the lockdown in international travel. Our borders are closed. So, and, and I've actually written a letter to the minister and I've said there are such people. So, if the minister doesn't respond positively to all of these issues that um, are not of our making, they're not of firearm owners making, then unfortunately the only alternative, the default position, is that he'll have to be taken to court. And then in the case of an already expired license, will they be able to follow the normal procedure of license renewal or do they have to follow the amnesty procedure? No, they have to use the amnesty. One thing that we got um, a, a, an unequivocal indication, not from the minister, but from the Central Firearms Registry. We got recently got an unequivocal uh, indication that if the license has expired, then 
only the owner of that firearm may apply only in terms of the amnesty and only for a new license. So the owner, the amnesty for a new license. Well, Martin, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and if people want to contact you, uh, you said you had a Facebook page? Uh, MJ Hood and Associates Facebook, and then, sorry, MJ Hood and Associates Attorneys Facebook, and then um, also my email, which is quite simply martin at MJ Hood with an H, uh, .co .za. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. I have Chaza CEO and the Chair of Havasa, the Hunting and Wildlife Association of SA, on the line today, Mr. Stephen Paulos. Thank you for making time for us. It's my pleasure. It seems to be the one thing we do have at the moment is time because we're all sitting at home wondering what's next in our future. So, time we have a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, the draft framework for sectors was made available by the South African government over the weekend. And there are some questions that we would like to ask you. Uh, we saw that hunting is allowed at level four and onwards, but there are certain conditions. And I think there's a bit of confusion. Will you just shed some light on it? And, and what is your opinion on these different levels and the hunting situation? Yes, yeah, so hunting enters at level four, which is very fortunate for us, I think. I think it's also a recognition of the important role that hunting plays sustaining um, those landowners, those agriculturalists who have chosen wildlife as their specific model for their farming uh, enterprise. And clearly their harvest method is hunting, so it makes absolute sense that hunting has to come in at, a, at, at quite high levels in this framework. Uh, to sustain those entities, it's a rural uh, business. It, we know in this country it supports up to two million livelihoods, so it's critical for, for, for very many people. Um, so there's no surprise to me, we've been doing work behind the scenes to argue for the opening up of some uh, possibilities in the hunting space and, and uh, that it's popped in at number at level four, we're thankful for to, to government and to specifically our, the departments we fall under, that it's there. But the other side of the coin is that we must be incredibly responsible with it. There are going to remain restrictions, so it's not going to be hunting as usual, unfortunately. There's no doubt uh, this coming weekend, for example, the first it was, would have been a long weekend under normal circumstances. A lot of people have got hunts booked. There is no ways, to, please, I don't want to disappoint people, but there's no ways you're hopping in your double cab with the family and heading off with the fencer trailer behind you to a hunting weekend in the normal sense. It's not going to be like that at all. Uh, first and foremost, there are going to be restrictions about crossing borders of provinces. There's going to be restrictions about leaving the the red areas, the the, um, uh, the dense metro areas, are probably going to still be under level five lockdown by all information flowing our way at the moment. So, hunting is probably going to be fairly possible, provided you're very responsible and provided you're relatively close to where you hunt within your own province better is best. Whether we'll be able to get hunting quite soon outside of your province, I don't think at level four, maybe we can start arguing for certain things with protocols when we develop them for level three and below. I think at level four, government is rightly concerned to protect our rural areas from this illness. Uh, that is their single biggest focus concern at the moment. They know they're not going to manage well in the in the metros, but they need to defend our rural areas. And I think we should all respect that. Yes. So yes. it's not going to be a normal season by any means. This illness is estimated to hit this country middle to late winter at the hardest. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. Um, and then something that we would like to know is what is happening um, within our hunting associations currently, like associations like Chaza and its member associations? Well, obviously, meeting type events, our sport shooting calendar and all that has been thrown out the window for the season so far. We're all hoping for, for the, that to come back a, as soon as possible. And that is the human touch. Hunting is... A, is of all the human activities, hunting is probably one of the oldest things that brought people together as a species. 
And that touch of humanity is essential. And that's probably what most hunters miss the most, is seeing their hunting buddies, whether it's on a shooting range or whether it's at a hunting field or at a meeting of like-minded folks with your association. But the behind the scenes work that gets done hasn't stopped. We've been working obviously on these protocols a lot, myself uh, and, and the Charza team, but also the whole Hawasa team, the other partners in the, in the wildlife sector, the wildlife ranchers, the professional hunters, other recreational or low, own use hunting organizations uh, that all make up the Awasa family, have been in constant liaison and working very hard uh, on, on the protocols that hopefully will get hunting happening as normal again. And then, of course, behind the scenes, there's membership issues that are problematic. The firearm issue is a big story at the moment. Uh, we have news out of the minister's office about that, in that they will, they will honor people who are within their 90-day period of expiring licenses, but they don't look keen to honor people who've been hindered from applying if the license has expired altogether. So although the, me the message from the minister's office to other stakeholders in the firearm space that I've read are cordial and are trying to deal with the matters, I think we're going to land up with an argument about how they've dealt with licenses that expire completely in this time. So that's a big problem we face. And then we are aware that there was the amnesty, which was a mechanism that some people with expired licenses had to rectify that. And that amnesty is due to expire the end of May. Yes. I don't know whether there won't be lifts begin quick enough for people to really make use of that amnesty easily. Most DFO officers are closed in the, in the police stations. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if that'll continue with this level four scenario. So the minister's office has said he'll have to approach parliament again to extend the amnesty. And we hope that obviously that happens quickly and we get answers there. So we've been very busy. We, we haven't stopped working. Members must realize that most Charter Association's officers are working remotely from home. The Charter team is certainly working remotely from home. So we are available for any queries and, and, and general, general information. And then I think one of the other questions is, um, what can hunters do during lockdown to keep busy and add value to their hunting experience when it's back to normal? Well, it seems the new international sport is cooking and eating. <laughs> so I think already Safari and Outdoor and, 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 and uh, Wilton Yach are driving a, a Cook Your Game Meat Challenge. I think that's a wonderful thing. I haven't had a chance to film anything yet myself. I'm also depleting my previous stocks of game meat, but I'll certainly look for an opportunity to join in on that fund and sharing some of the recipes with other people. So I think focusing on the utilization side is very positive. It's a message hopefully that non-hunters will see and take to heart and maybe encourage a few people to think about, if not taking up hunting, at least taking up consuming the products of hunting in the future. So that's good. And then, of course, I can't imagine, apart from those of us who've been working on the behind-the-scenes stuff on with, with, with government, I would imagine everybody else has completely revamped and recleaned their, their reloading rooms. <laughs> Every rifle is spotless. And uh, for, the, for the more, uh, it's a, the, those that are most motivated, I would imagine a lot of dry fire practice at home. You can put yourself in front of a mirror with a rifle and you can put a little stick dot on that mirror and practice your dry fire into your heart's content. Uh, luckily, there's a few people who are on small holdings or even on farms, and they obviously can carry on with quite a lot of relatively normal uh, uh, activities. I think those of us who have us, I'm a live on a small holding of about 14 hectares myself, mm -hmm. and home life is pretty much normal for us. And um, I can do a little bit of problem animal control on Indian miners, yes. which are, that we know, and a few other things, and that carries on. But for those that are in an urban environment, um, I think those of us with the blessings of a rural in, uh, existence uh, should really be sympathetic to those folk and realize that we're quite blessed where we are. But keep at it, keep doing stuff, read a book, read hunting books, stay in touch, talk to your kids about it in between doing the homeschooling, um, social media, use it positively. There's been a lot of negative on, on social media. I would suggest hunters use social media to put a positive message forward about who hunters are and what we're about. Mm -hmm. So there is much that we can do to stay together as a hunting community. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and one of our last questions is, um, uh, when, in your opinion, do you think we'll be able to hunt? Um, uh, you know, that's recreationally, that is. 
Look, I think there's going to be certain people that will almost start under the level four to do hunting more or less as they know they're hunting. The restrictions might not make your hunting camp exactly what it used to be. You might have a few guys that live in another province that would normally be joining you that can't join you. You might be short of liquor stocks, uh, which of course we all know the campfire and uh, uh, always needs a little bit of warming up around it. Uh, but I'm sure back to normal completely. I don't think this year myself. I think yeah. whatever happens, I think South Africa has to face its COVID-19 winter. So our hunting season is going to be our COVID-19 season. We need to hope and pray that uh, vaccines and, and cures come by the time next season comes around. Incredibly important for the overseas market that we can save 2021 because there's definitely no ways that 2020 is going to work for the incoming foreign hunting market at this stage. We're going to have airline bans and in any case, even if they were to start opening it, I think the clientele who often are elderly and well-off um, people from America and Europe will be cautious travelers until they're pretty confident that cures and, and vaccines are available. So local hunters need to step up to the plate and fill that gap for our landowners and for our outfitters uh, in the short term. And hopefully we'll get a little bit of hunting in from the beginning of May and hopefully that will improve provided let's say uh, let's hope that the government steps which have been proactive start to to really preserve some areas where life can be a little bit normal uh, i'm afraid metros are going to probably bear the brunt of this at least for the winter so uh, it's, it's going to be some people are back to normal and the rest of the people unfortunately they're going to have to make other forms of entertainment and keep in touch remotely yeah well, Stephen, thank you for your time. Um, our time has run out today, but it has been really informative. And thank you for uh, what Shaza is, is, is doing for us in the industry. Um, if they want some more information or have some questions, they can mail it to ceo at shaza.co.za. Um, and thank you for your time once again. Thanks, Verona. It's been a pleasure. Ons loer gaf jy so'n bykie by jou in, lekker vierkies is altyd daar in die achtergrond. Um, dankie vir jou tyd. Bruno, is een groot plezier. Uh, jy vang my net op tyd, die kinders is al in die bad. En uh, die skaapchoppies lê lekker in die olijfolie, in die boestersaus. Een paar sierlimoen of twee uit my, uit my boom uit die achter, so ons gaan lekker braai vanaf. Lekker vryk is daar chop. Ja, lekker, lekker. So op die, op die praat van die vleisie wat jy daar het. Vertel my ook gegaan van, van die Safari Outdoor Wildsvleis Challenge wat ek gesien het nou op ons sociale media die laaste ruk. Ja, yes, ons het die laaste paar daar het ons, um, ek, ek gaan jou nie verveel aan meenie, ek gaat ook jou ons kijkers verveel nie, ek seker allemaal het al gesien, maar vir die wat nie weet nie, um, daar is een journalist uh, genaamd Elise Tempelhoff, wat uh, baie controversiele artikel geplaas het, in die beeld en in die volksblad laas week, media 24 het het geplaas. Uh, hoe dit ook al sê, dit is geplaas, hulle het loopie nie gegeen oor, oor sekere, sekere moeds en moenies, uh, as het kom by die wildbedrijf en uh, virus is, meer specifiek die COVID-19 virus, maar ek denk hulle dat verwijs na, na virus in die algemeen, wat, um, wat dat miskien van wildsvleis af oorgedra kan word na mense toe, en um, ek denk, as jy my persoonlijke opinie vraag, ek denk het is so duidelik soos daglig, dat dit maar net weer een aanval was op, op, op jaag in die bedrijf, soos ons het ken, dit is absoluut absurd om te denk, dat, uh, dat, dat, dat wildsvlees, soos wat ons het die laatste hoeveel dekades ken, en gebruik op het dagelijkse basis, recht dier Afrika, nie net ons ouwens, wat lekker nou en dan een rooi bokkie, of een koedo of een ding plat trek, en droog ons een bultong in een paar stuikshuis toe bring nie, ek praat van recht dier Afrika, is wildsvlees, uh, een van die stapel voedsels wat daar is, dit hou kampen, dit, 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 dit hou miljoene mense aan die leven nog altyd, en daar nog daar, weet, daar is geen, geen, geen manier wat die ouwe soort die bestemmings gaan maak. Oké, okay, dit, dit gesê, um, ons goeie vrienden in die bedrijf, die Outdoor Investment Holdings Groep, um, hulle, hulle het besluit, hulle gaan het hier daar los nie, en um, ja, hulle, hulle vat die stap so'n bykie verder, met, uh, met diegene wat die berug geplaas het, en om ook geskryf het, maar um, om, om ons as een jaggemeenskap en een wildboergemeenskap en een boerderij as sulks gemeenskap sy systeem hiervoor te wees het safari outdoor het goed gedink 
uh, met een paar van hulle vrienden om een wildsvlees challenge te begin. Eet wilds, hashtag gay meat. So, die twee hashtags is hashtag safari outdoor en hashtag gay meat. Die eerste video waar ek genomineer was, het ek op die, op die, uh, die bandwagon gespring, ons het een poikie gemaakt, rooibok poikie gemaakt, ons het al heel aan fillets gebraai, ons het al... So, um, ons ondersteun het, ons ondersteun het rechtig, uh, dit wees maar net, dat dit is ons jaggie net nie. Ons is lief vir ons wildsvlees, um, ons ondersteun een hele bedrijf, van die kleinste retailer, tot die grootste wildboer, is allemaal eens in een ketting saam. So, ja, hierdie challenge loop lekker, um, ons het al paar van ons vriende, daar is, daar is manne wat daar is uit Noorwee en Amerika, uh, kliënte en vriende wat hulle wildsvlees wat hulle daar gebruik, uh, in een video van ons gewys het hoe hulle dit doen om hulle steen ook vir, vir Suid-Afrika en seker maar Suider-Afrika as een geheel te, te wees. Dan is ons ook bezig huidiglik met ons my uitgave, ons is nie bezig met hom nie, hy is al klaar op die digitale rak. Uh, net so, ja. dat so een story wat, wat ons die week maar moet uitleg, wat denk jy? Maar nou, ek, ek denk as ek recht onthou, was hy maandagochtend op ons uh, Geimanan Daily op ons newsletter geweest, was daar so lekker terg paragrafie. Dit gaan oor die, oor die jacht wat ons saam met die ons van Triggercam gedoen het. Ongelooflike stukkie toerusting, ek gaan niks uitlap nie, uh, kry as oblief jou wild en jacht, uh, digitaal beskikbaar, en dan natuurlijk op ons YouTube kanaal, as jy hem sommer net vir die ons hieronder op die skerm kan gooi, dit is ons Afrika's Sportsman Channel, um, episode nummer is ek nou bykie, bykie, bykie vannig op my, maar is een van die laaste episode, as ek denk is hier by 55 of 56 rond, krijg die video wat ons daar saam met ons van Trigger Cam in Natal gemaakt het. Ja, ach en dan het ons nou gehoor dat um, daar is nou sekere levels wat ons het, en daar is natuurlijk, a, hulle noem het a draft framework, of, of uh, jy weet hoe dit nou werk, by elke uh, vlak van wat ons gaan heen in die land, en ons het gesien dat jag is toelaatbaar, maar daar is baie voorwaardes en goeders wat ons in acht moet neem, nee. Corona, ek dink is een baie gevaarlijke area om jouself weer uit te laat, so ek is blij, jy vraag my nie, uh, want ek gaan myself hier uitla daar, daar oor nie, ek weet wild en jag het wel met die inlichting wat ons tot ons beskikking het, het ons uh, formeel gecommuniceer met ons, met ons leesers en die ouwens wat ons volg op sociale media. Um, ja, level 4 sê, bly by jou huis, as jy dit, as jy dit opsom en kort. Die ouwens wat moet werk, werk, as jy kan van die huis af werk, werk van die huis af. So, ek dink dit is die ding waarop ons regering focus, uh, so, ek, ek dink jy ou moet, ek dink jy ou moet iets gaan terg heen, net om vir jou eenvoudige voorbeeld te, te gee, my pa is in die, in, in die beestbedrijf, hy is een beestaankoper, in Noordwees, Noordkaap, en in die vrystaat koop hulle, koop hulle beeste aan, en, en die vrystaat, ouwens, het hierdie week, het hulle veilings, het hulle veilings toegemaak, um, van weer die feit dat die politie die ouwens kom, kom, uh, jy weet, kom versteer op, op die veilings, en die ouwens kom dreig, uh, met een brief van die minister wat sê, Veilings mag aangaan, dit is deel van landbouw, en dit is een noodzakelijke manier hoe die, hoe die hele ketang bly loop om, om enige producent daar buiten, ach, verbruiker daar buiten, plies op sy tafel te sit, kom die politiebeamte net, net eenvoudig en hy sê, luister, hier is een social gathering, of, of jylle gaan hy stof, ek sluit jylle toe. So, jy weet, dit is so moeilik, ek dink, ou moet by jou jachters vir enigens uh, so, uh, begin, gaan na hulle toe, luister wat die ouwe sê, maar gebruik nog steeds jou oordeel. Dokter uh, Krappies Els, van Natchew het dit mooi gestel in, in, in die onderkant van een van hulle brieven laat. Gebruik jou jou oordeel en, en wees realistisch. Moe nie gaan soek vir moeilijkheid nie. Um, ja, ons is allemaal, ek beloof julle, daar is min ons wat meer lis is ek is om hier uit te kom en iets te gaan skiet. Uh, nie net omdat ek al vir lis is nie, dit is deel van wat ons doen en, 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 en so, maar ek, ek dink het ou moet rechtig nuchter hier oor probeer dink en uh, ek dink jy moet die regering taart nie. Ek dink ou moet vir die huis blij en hierdie, hierdie, hierdie Hierdie pandemie waarin ons ons self bevind, is nog baie ver van weg af. So ek dink het is dat nie een slechte idee om te probeer hou by die regulatie so ver as man. Daar is baie geleentere in die bedrijf wat aangepas het by die huidige omstandighede in Suid-Afrika. Ons poog daarin om my op hoog te tou van geleentere in die bedrijf en enige veranderinge wat mag plaasvind. The Reino de Toy Rare Game Production Auction has been postponed until the 9th of May this year. Silent Valley Stud Game Breeders are also postponing their auction to next year, 8 May 2021. Please take note that the Bona Bona Game Breeders 4th Platinum Auction has been postponed until further notice. Remember the Summit Wildlife Auction 26 September in Graaf Renet. Thank you for watching. 
follow all our social media platforms. We try to bring you the latest news and the best entertainment in the game and hunting industry. Stay safe and stay home. Till next week, goodbye. Remember to subscribe to Game & Hunt Digimag. Go to gameandhuntdigimag.co.za Our interactive online magazine where you can click, scroll and watch videos. Available on all devices.